motorized valve actuator must be capable of halting its operation precisely at the fully open and fully closed positions. This butterfly valve is one obvious example of where precise stopping at the two limits is important. It must be capable of applying additional torque or effort where necessary. This wedge gate valve is typical of a type where extra effort is sometimes needed to make it seal tightly and perhaps even more so to open it again. And additional torque is sometimes needed at both ends of travel as with this double block and bleed gate valve which requires tightness on closing and a firm seal it fully open to prevent leakage into the valve body. Also, because most valves are subject to sticking, the actuator must be capable of recognizing that this has happened and so switch itself off, even though it has not reached the limit of its travel. This plug valve, for example, may lack lubrication, and extra force would only damage sealing surfaces. So, it can be seen that a sufficiently versatile actuator must have both travel limit and torque control on both the opening and closing actions. It needs a sensitivity almost equal to human hands. The Rotorque A-Range actuator almost has this by virtue of this unique electromechanical switch. It switches itself off at either end of valve travel, either by sensing it has moved the valve's closing mechanism far enough, or by feeling that the valve is tightly closed. However, careful setting of this switch mechanism is essential to the efficient operation of the valve on which it is mounted. As we shall see, this is not difficult. And these are all the tools you need. If the valve is supplied by the maker with the actuator already fitted, these settings will probably already have been correctly made. If they haven't, then the first part of this video program explains how to carry them out. How to set the position limit switches so they operate at each end of the valve stroke. And then how to select the correct torque function for the valve type, plus how to adjust the torque value for your particular application. An understanding of these setting procedures is all that is necessary during the initial installation of the A-Range actuator. However, at a later date, when servicing or maintenance becomes necessary, a more thorough understanding of the mechanism will be a definite advantage. So the second part of this video is devoted to an explanation of this in some depth. First find out whether the settings have been correctly made already. Simply close the valve by hand and check that the pointer moves to the shut position just as the valve seats. Now fully open the valve and check that the position indicator moves to the open position just before the hand wheel reaches its stop. If the indicator reads correctly at both ends of the stroke then the settings have already been made. If it doesn't, then proceed as follows. Engage the hand wheel drive. For convenience, remove the indicator striker and the lamp. Release these two lock nuts and run them both back along the shaft, leaving them loose. Loosen this clutch nut at least three turns anti-clockwise. The screwed shaft can now be turned with the fingers. First we'll set the limit for valve closed. 
Turn the actuator hand wheel manually until the valve is closed. Close it firmly. Turning the screwed shaft anti-clockwise, bring the traveling nut, this is it here, hard up against its backstop. Gripping the screwed shaft between your thumb and forefinger, continue to turn it, using this over-travel guide for leverage if you need to. Bring the over-travel guide up to the overrun stop. During this final movement, you will have heard the switches click. Let's do that again and listen. Holding the over-travel guide hard over against its stop, tighten the clutch nut and release your grip. The over-travel guide should stay put and not drop back. The closed limit switches are now set. They will trip just before the mechanical stop is reached. Now to set the open limit. Wind the valve open as far as mechanically possible and leave it there. Don't back it off. Pull the over-travel guide over clockwise until it comes hard up against its stop and firmly hold it there. Switches will have been heard to click while you were doing this. Run the open stop, this is it here, clockwise down the screwed shaft until it comes hard up against the traveling nut. Push the washer down the screwed shaft until it is against the open stop. Now run the lock nut down until it clamps both stop and washer together and tighten it lightly. Release the over-travel guide. It should stay put against its stop. If the procedure has been carried out correctly, switches should not be heard to reset. The open limit switches are now set. As in the case of the travel